I actually once lied to my uh, parents about uh, marks in some exam when I was in school, inspired by this, thinking that someone will <laughs> rescue me in the end, everyone will come together and they'll forgive me. I wasn't forgiven for a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> film that still didn't go well. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Anupama Chopra. And I'm Rahul Desai. And you're watching FC Retake. And as we always do, Rahul, we would first say it's been too long. Uh, I won't say anything after this because it's been eight months this time. And uh, we make promises that we keep breaking. So. I know, I know. But listen, lots of people over the many years have talked to us about doing a retake yeah. of Kabhi Haan Kabhi Na, which is a film that I really love. And what better than the anniversary, the 30th anniversary of the film, to revisit it in, uh, what was it like for you to go back to it? Uh, I don't have to go back to it. It's imprinted in my mind. No it's way. probably my favorite Hindi film of all time. Really? I've been waiting for this retake <laughs> for decades since I was born. And <laughs> I, I, I just, came prepared. <laughs> I, I, came pre I was prepared the day I was born. But uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's no end to it. I hope I let you speak eventually during this uh, retake. But uh, but I see you've got uh, uh, a collector's item here. Okay, listen. So here's the truth of it, folks. I did a review of Kabhi Haan Kabhi Na when it released. Yes, I've been doing it for 30 years, <laughs> which explains honestly. everything about me. Uh, but, but guys, here's the thing. Okay, now the question is, can I read it without glasses? No. Okay, sorry. We didn't plan for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> it says the 30 years thing. <laughs> Here's the book. It's a it's a sort of collection of of my writings over many many years. Uh, but this goes back to actually when I was a correspondent at India Today magazine, mm. uh, which was uh, my second job. My first was at Sunday magazine, and then I joined India Today. And I I'm so happy to read this. I I was like, man, I have to find that review, and it's not available on the net. At least I couldn't yeah. find it. Uh, but thanks to this collection. It is actually here. And I want to just read. So I, I did a little bit. Thank you. What does Karan say when he wears his glasses and coffee with Karan? Kuch, he says some, he has a line. Which, yeah. <laughs> so so I, I cribbed a little bit about how it, it it's sort of meandering and it doesn't do a few things what? nicely. But here, here is my, my last paragraph. Huh. Uh, with a budget of under rupees 1 crore, but with bags of imagination, Shah, Kundan Shah, has created as much poetry as is possible in mainstream Hindi cinema. Kabhi Haan Kabhi Na is the cinematic opposite of Khalnayak, which obviously had just released a few years ago, mm. I think. Yeah. Um, this movie weaves a quiet spell and somewhere in between the tears and the laughter whispers into our ears that maybe Sunil had it right after all. That perhaps the scurried search for a destination is futile. Perhaps the journey is the destination. You, 30 years ago. You got it then. <laughs> and I'm glad you liked it because then this conversation would not continue. I, 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 it's normally for me, that's mostly the icebreaker with a lot of people. Really? Because, yeah, what do you say? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's everyone's favorite question to film critics. Right? What's your favorite film ever? That's the worst question. Yeah. But this is my one answer to everything. I was like, and you know, my history with this film is really long, obviously, because I was really young when it released. Um, I didn't understand it, didn't like it at all when I watched it as seven years old or something. Um, but my dad's greatest contribution to my life was insisting that this is a great film. Really? Through the 90s. I fell for Dar, I fell for Bazigar, I fell for DDLJ. Which released just before this just one? Just a couple of months before yeah, that. Yeah. And later on I understood, you know, what the significance was. But I fell for all those more popular Shah Rukh films in the 90s. Um, but it's only in the 2000s once I started revisiting my favourite heroes films and started watching a little more of Kabiya Kabina. I realized that there was yeah there was no comparison to it and it's because I got older I started understanding that not everything is do or die not everything is life or death I wrote a piece last year to, uh, 29 years for film companion uh, 29 is an odd number but let's act like it's 30 um, and and um, I was revisiting that piece right now and I, I, in that also I've written that it's because I started growing older and started becoming more pragmatic realizing that 
you know you miss a bus it's not the end of the world you fail your exam it's not the end of the world uh you keep getting heartbroken it's fine and it's very rare in the early 90s to see a film like that sandwiched between a ddlj and a dar and a bazigar you know yeah. it's a bridge connecting all those films and, and this was the year of hamat ke hai kaun 1994 right. also yeah Imagine. i know that's a big year actually. yeah 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 but uh, so what yeah. about it rahul uh, continues to speak to you uh it's just the uh, it's just how this slice this entire slice of life genre that we've come to love over the years the coming of age genre uh, you know this this wasn't pretending to be sharp about it 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 wasn't using a knife to tell us that it was it was basically telling us that um, it was i won't even call sunil a lovable loser or something that is a very average kid with average ambitions and he is technically it's an artist origin story technically it's a lot of things but uh, but it just um, you know sort of uh, it's 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 difficult to explain right now but i can tell you that my relationship with the film has changed over the decades not over the years because i can tell you i felt the same way about it last year but and i felt i feel the same way this year but uh, it, it just that everything about the film alludes to a towards like more mainstream tropes in the 90s right like you keep expecting the film to become something else yeah you know he is the third wheel in a love triangle uh but he remains that third wheel yeah uh, you know he does not get the girl and that's not normal in the 90s at all even now even now, even now, now who would make like, this film yeah and it's not and you know and, and there are so many things there there are um there are elements of his obsession in the film obsession mm. that was romanticized by his previous films that a lot of us didn't know how to process as kids uh but it never really takes that route you know yeah. it always stops short it even when he fails his exams his father is going to throw him out but he goes till the gate yeah he doesn't become a ranbir kapoor rockstar character Correct. You know, he stays there he goes back and uh, and it becomes and there are no uh, there are no like dramatic swishes no theatrical swishes and uh, i don't know how it was like i just realized that a lot of people thought the same way then which is great but it didn't happen immediately for me but i like that yeah i like that it's it's a companionship that's happened with <laughs> <laughs> that's so lovely yeah. that's so lovely no for me i went back to see it for this conversation mm. i remembered a lot of it what really stayed with me was of course goga kapoor oh, as, my favorite. as the don <laughs> who, who's just this romantic at heart it feels like he's watched agni but too many times <laughs> it was great i love it because him. he wasn't like it at all i loved him and i loved that moment where where you know his sidekick Vasco, Vasco the the man in dreadlocks gets told ki note mat karo feel karo because the dawn is just such a sentimental romantic yeah. uh, but you know to go back rahul and to see it now is to also kind of i'm really really admiring of what kundan and pankaj adwani who co-wrote the script like the just the courage of it hmm. because finally like what is the story here kuch nahi hai he loves this woman a uh, woman you know and he tells her i love you yeah. and she's she's laughing at him and she's saying oh sunil whatever you know she doesn't take him seriously mm. uh, there is a smarter looking uh, there's a better richer yeah. rival who she finally leaves him for you know and uske alawa what, what is your like you said where's the drama the drama mm. is okay he fakes his i love that too the mark he, he fakes the mark sheet <laughs> and anthony gives him first division <laughs> and he's like yes. at least thoda aur credible kya matlab you know make the lie yeah. more credible which yeah. i thought was just hilarious yeah. uh, but you know the courage to kind of tell this story about it being okay to not be a hmm. uh, superhero yeah. not be heroic in every way he like you said he's just an average guy yeah. and in an average house on an average street uh, i loved nasruddin shah's father braganza who keeps insisting that everybody gives him lifts because all roads <laughs> all lead to god <laughs> i love that i thought that was so funny um, and you know just the i thought the kind of humanity in it Hmm. which i i feel like kundan really brought to it because you know of course jane bido yaro is a classic that yeah. can never be matched hmm. but it offers a more curdled view of the world and and it is uh, there is a there is an aftertaste of bitterness in it which which is what makes it so great but this for me was just this kind of there's just a sweetness yeah. and there's an acceptance and there's an inclusivity i mean look at that band i know 
it was woke before woke was a thing exactly like, exactly so uh, you know here's a band with what two catholics one muslim mm. one parsi yeah, uh, yeah. and they're all making music all faiths yeah, yeah and i didn't music. even realize that till like much later it was Correct. so normal it was so normal yeah yeah and uh, I, I, yeah and that's what my I, i think that's what my father used to keep telling me he was already like middle aged by then so i'm like uh, i don't get it like this years of film that is telling your son that it's okay to fail his exams <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, he was like no no wait 10 years or so so yeah. then uh, of course that wasn't a license to do all that but it's just it's so reassuring and for middle class people growing up in like smaller cities like like me and like a lot of others i know um it was very calming to realize that the film was talking to us was a representation of us it wasn't aspirational yeah it wasn't trying to be aspirational saying you can be raj you can be rahul you can be all those characters those were reactions to life this was life correct and the, uh, and again you know the, these are things that obviously dawned on me much later but i love that the film is constantly sort of torn between reality and fiction it's always constantly suspended somewhere because it keeps telling you that you know let's see the films you've watched we'll do all those things stop at a point and go back yeah and uh, and that's why my favorite scene probably in hindi cinema is the church scene the, the ring. it starts with it it ends with yeah. it the ring What, the ring yeah. and i i i've lost count of the amount of times i've written about it over the years in different contexts and i i realized that and i was revisiting not the film but those pieces to see if my reading is still the same it keeps changing every time like last year it was very different mm. from say 10 years ago and uh, you know the film starts with his dream it ends with like a very realistic view of that dream yeah. and it was so heartbreaking because that uh, as a child when i watched it the first time i remember telling my dad after coming back home saying if he had found the ring they would have gotten married you know <laughs> and i was like uh, that was my reading that's yeah. how it yeah. works yeah. and uh, i always thought that that was the conceit of that scene till i grew older and then i was like um, he he didn't uh, he didn't say he he uh saw the ring lying yeah. in the church because he probably wanted few more moments of of just her not being married or just her not being married yeah. which and, is and that lovely. moment that yeah. moment in that church scene where he looks at his sister oh man the sister's oh reaction god. was just god and awesome. she is crying yeah, and no. I, i was just weeping in front of my computer watching this and i was like what is wrong with it me still works, huh? it still works it still works it still works yeah you know she just yeah. looks at him and he's looking at her and he was so lovely i know I he know. was so lovely it was uh, yeah and you keep the another thing like uh, i i'd like to believe when the piece came out last year sharo credited because he he quoted something that was very similar I love like it. winning the moment by losing the day which yeah. was a play on the bazigar line obviously hmm. very famous line but hmm. uh, that's what sunil was and that's what in the end to see that church scene and again and again i've seen it i don't even need to watch the film to enjoy to cry during that scene correct but yeah that reaction that same those same eyes we saw in dar in a different context yeah. the same eyes we saw in bazigar in different context the- would you would you agree that the same eyes you saw for a flash in ddlj when she says it's i'm going to get married yes. and he says main nahi aaunga yes main nahi aaunga that's Hana? another moment yeah yeah that's again like uh, i'm so glad you brought that moment yeah. up, but uh, that's exactly that yeah and see the different charoks and see the different context and that's why kabhi kabhi na stands the test of time for me all the others are movies hmm. and uh, and yeah they continue of course the lovely characters in the film na surajin i didn't even know who he was then but i always thought of him as a real father like a real uh, priest and uh, it was lovely because he was the embodiment of the attitude of the film saying you know chalta hai yeah ho jayega yeah. it's fine uh, yeah. it, it, it's not you fail you make a uh, you, you make mistakes there you is lie. mistakes you lie, lie you manipulate yeah. he character assassinates ana at some point he yeah. lies to chris about a uh, portrays her as someone else and uh, just that yearning in that film could have turned into all kinds of toxic obsession Absolutely. which we see in films now which we used to see in films there yeah. and uh, i'm so glad it didn't and i'm so glad we can keep going back to something like that i'm i'm not going to use the word innocence that you know it used to be innocent time films is stupid people like that but in the end for all the mistakes he made he sort of paid for it also he did you know he, he did was, that party scene where yeah. he admits that he's faked his mark sheet yeah. uh you know that's a very tough moment to be in oh, yeah, you know yeah. so and 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 the fact that they 
but there is a certain sweetness and even an innocence now yes. in that sure. scene yeah. that the mother starts to sing yeah. uh, you know wo to hai albela yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and and it's just the the kind of affection with which that entire community comes around him gathers around him and yeah. eventually he sort of persuades the father to also forgive him yeah. uh, i felt there was a certain kind of just a sweetness in it that yeah. I don't know now if somebody even told you this ki oh there'll be a party scene aur wo gana gayegi ma aur fir ek ek neighbor gana gayega in the same voice it won't yeah. I, in the same voice in the same yeah. voice yeah. every neighbor has the same voice <laughs> and then he's forgiven yeah. you just say that's ridiculous i know yeah. hai na hmm. but it works it works yeah that that scene is uh, really difficult to watch even for me today i'm like uh, you get second hand embarrassment you get second hand humiliation as a kid when you're watching felt. it or what yeah. is felt and what is done basically yeah. Yeah. and that for us was a crime back then if hmm. you fail first of all and then lie about failing yeah. like that's how we were brought up and yeah. uh, i actually once lied to my uh, parents about uh, marks in some exam when i was in school inspired by this thinking that someone will <laughs> rescue me in the end everyone will come together and they'll forgive me i wasn't forgiven for a week <laughs> so <laughs> film That's still no uh, yeah, the, the escapism still is there but it's also rooted in a very nice uh, sort of uh, uh, pragmatism yeah. it was lovely which yeah. which is also what finally the dawn tells you at the end na yeah. life mein to kabhi haar kabhi na hota hi rehta hai yeah again uh, and and you know that juhi chavla cameo yeah i'm a big fan of 90s cameos and i think this was right up there because it uh, was fab it was because yeah. uh, we had just seen them in dark yeah <laughs> and he was we, anyone who knew the context might get creeped out by it but uh, it was such a lovely role reversal of things and uh, yeah of course don coming in the end was a nice touch yeah. yeah but do you think raul that they could make a film like this today i mean imagine <laughs> with a with like the hottest young star though he wasn't the hottest young star when no, they he shot wasn't. for it i think that was the charm right yeah. of the film also that you're taking someone who's actually broken out by playing a villain a uh, playing an anti hero of yeah. sorts in a couple of films yeah and turning that entire reputation on the audience who now loves him suddenly uh first of all it'd be too glossy today mm. i don't think you can retain that old world charm of goa in the 90s yeah uh, the way kundan shah sees places i don't think anyone else sees them yeah. um of course you can't make it in goa because of what it is now correct and yeah it's easy to say that sure a film like this can be written but there'd be a lot of nostalgia in it it be reaching for the 80s and the 90s it won't be reflective of the time we are in today no. and the fact is it's not as innocent anymore we have cell phones now there's no and that entire plot would have changed with cell phones correct it always happens correct uh, correct so yeah no i don't think we can make something like that but uh, that's why i i liked like a decade ago ek mai aur ek tu because again it was about a guy who does not have a happily ever after yeah and again that film may not have worked but it stands the test of time in a lot of our memories yeah yeah but it's amazing how even now 30 years later uh, it's so rare to have that Yeah. Where the man and the woman are not together and they they are still friends or they can still be complete yeah in themselves. Even now, how often do you see it? Yeah, you don't see it. And mm-hmm. it's, it's it's all about marketing and about whether the audiences will accept it. People make yeah. films for the audiences. See, we don't like a lot of films reflecting life. A lot of them are called parallel cinema and art house cinema because of that. uh but we tend to pigeon hole these kind of stories as saying nahi mm-hmm. yaar ye it's too realistic hai. what is the difference between me and you then type like that's how sharukh looked also in the Correct. 90s right that floppy hair that Correct. and i was looking for a blue t-shirt today also which he wears throughout the film i couldn't find it but uh, gauri did his costumes i saw the name yes yeah, yes she was in charge of the costumes farah khan did the choreography yeah very familiar name you know that, yeah. um, renu saluja edited the film so it was like a Mm. top notch cast and crew yeah it know? was and uh, and ashutosh gwarekar as that drummer as the drummer i love him, uh, love him. I, i mean there was uh, even our i think aditya lakhe who was kachra and ragan yes yes lot of them He very familiar Tony, faces yeah a lot of familiar faces and i love the uh, you know the the fact that of course he plays in a band which allows you to put in all this amazing music yeah, and yeah. that set piece dawn song in the nightclub yeah. you know that idea that and of course he's playing it 
humorously right but the idea that even the bad guys have a back story mm. and they are this. also human yeah. you know and and that they can be moved yeah. and love art i think it was just fabulous that was uh, that that entire arc of like a don having a tragic back story and a break a breakup <laughs> basically uh, that gave me a sense of humor in the 90s i was like uh, I get it, and and that's another thing. Also, like my dad insisted, saying this is funny. Correct. <laughs> it's not dark. It's not self-serious. It's funny. It is funny. And uh, and I'm very glad for the fact that they made Sunil a misunderstood artist, right? Like yeah. because of course, like like any other era, being a musician, your parents are against it. Your everyone is against it. But the fact that his art was always shining through. That's yeah. what he was getting fans within. Like even. Uh, the manager and the the uh, and the dawn, yeah. which is which I'll never get over. But uh, yeah, that entire scene, the which you mentioned, the note karo, uh, note mat karo, feel karo, is uh, you watch it without any context today, and I challenge someone not to uh, be confused about whether it's sad or funny. It's like it's just it's hilarious. <laughs> it's and Virendra Saxena, I realized much later it was him. That's right. He looked nothing like him, like <laughs> at all. And these are all in jokes, right? Like these are Goan stereotypes. I get it, but yeah, uh, because yeah. we saw Josh less than ten years later, yeah. it was a very different Goa yeah. in that film. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. And once again, Shah Rukh. Uh, but a very credit. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah but in in Kabhiya Kabina, there's no better performance of Shah Rukh. I think even he said that bunch of times. Yeah, I think he he's or maybe him or Gauri have talked about how that character was the closest to who he. Was or is at that point of at time for point. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's always one. I'm glad it's that film for him. Yeah, and it's not Dara Basika, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, no, I totally get it because uh, the casting really worked because of that. Because of where he was in his career. Yeah. Because yeah. of uh, the fact that he wasn't trying to be like an action hero or romantic hero at that point. He's not projecting at all. Yeah, you and know, it was just, just unadorned. Yeah. Um, Such you know, rawness, no, yeah. almost. Okay, I'm yeah. just a, you know, I'm just like this guy who. Has no idea what he's going to do, like right, yeah. for the next few years, and yeah. uh, it's very rare a Hindi film does that. So of course there was Anna, as he was, as they kept saying, never Anna but Anna. I still say Anna. <laughs> they can say whatever they want. <laughs> That's fine. And you know we all fell in love with her hmm. because of how Shah Rukh looked at her, and 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 from the beginning, from that moment when he went to pick her up on the railway station after, of course. Puncturing poor hmm. Deepak Tijori, Chris's car. Uh, uh, she was just the great object of affection for everyone. Yeah, she was, uh, you know, because of the kind of heroine Shah Rukh was opposite in the nineties. Anna for me was always probably the most mysterious character in his filmography. Then I looked at her almost like at least in the nineties when I was growing up. You know, sort of getting into that phase where you have crushes, where you you know uh, start falling in love with heroines. um I, i started looking at anna as more of an ideal like it, it's sort of a like the way sharuk looks at of the girl next door the way sharuk imagines maya in dil to pagal hai right. to put it very bluntly like right. that's okay you know there is someone like that and there is someone like that in a film like this and uh, and of course you're right about the fact that you know um, it's entirely plausible that there's sharuk sunil there's uh, deepak tejori's chris uh, there uh, the, She's probably the object of affection of many people in right. Goa at that point, point. Yeah. and I love the fact that they started it in the same way that almost Dar started. Yeah. With the train. Yeah. And yeah. waiting for her to. And I always used to get confused: is it Juhi Chawla or uh, Suchitra Krishnamurthy coming back? And uh, and that says a lot also. But he also echoes Divana Raul in that whole he motorcycle, does, of course, you know, which yeah. is of course the iconic entry of Shah Rukh Correct. in the movies in the where. Movies. A motorcycle on that marine drive flyover, yeah, yeah. and and you know I love that moment where in the film uh, he's on that motorcycle and Chris is in his fancy red yeah, yeah. car and, and they're, they're both parallel. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're know. both heading to Anna. Yeah, loved it. So now with that, let's take some comments. Rashmitaz eighty five says these retake sessions are living proof that movie viewing is such a subjective experience and beauty indeed lies in the eyes of the beholder. In the case, in this case, I, the reviewer and the critic, what you disliked and did not buy into a few years earlier suddenly feels heartfelt and sweet when viewed several years later. This is so true, which is why I think critiquing a movie right after its release is so unfair for filmmakers, as the subjective view of the reviewer, which can be influenced by the mood, the situation, the life stage, etc., of the reviewer, ends up impacting how many people end up going to a theater to watch a movie. 
we should make our own decisions based on the trailer and not based on the subjective opinions of a few critics. Wow, that comment started with like something I'd be <laughs> proud of of quoting quickly. in a review and that escalated <laughs> as something anti-critic. But uh, I agree with most of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, in an ideal world, you'll review it, you'll take your time and review stuff like that. But uh, that's why we have re things like retake, you yeah. know, like we can look back on things and tell you that it is a subjective experience yeah. and I, I you and know, it does change yeah depending on who you are horse saying that you know this is how it is that's yeah. not set in stone correct it's your like these these films they they don't grow on you it's you who grow up and you know see them differently correct the film doesn't change you yeah, do exactly yeah and we've said yeah. this uh, about but intake. which doesn't in any way take away from the fact that we will go there on friday morning watch it That's and review a it nice time capsule to have exactly yeah. exactly okay uh, the next one is uh tuhin Bhattacharji. um anupama ma'am you have said you have never quite liked veer zara maybe time for a retake please <laughs> And it is uh, going on in cinemas also right now. Actually. Yes, it's, yes, it's, we could do a retake of Visa. I, you know, honestly, truthfully, I don't remember uh, a lot of it. Um, I wish to God my cinematic memory was as good as yours, Rahul. Yeah. However, I've done it for 30 years. <laughs> is there a Visa review also there inside? No. 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 Okay. So, so uh, I would love to. I would love to. I remember swooning in the song. Yeah. Um, but. I don't remember actually disliking it, but may, I, I don't know. Mm. I would love to revisit it yeah. again. So the next one is by Shakalpe Matja Pandu 3077. Compliments on that <laughs> handle. Uh, he says or she says, surely I shall watch it again. Also, Anu ma'am, as aise wale interview mein aapko dekh ke lagta hai, aap hum hi jaise ho. But Wikipedia pe jab aapka kaam dekhte hai, to dar lagta hai. It's so studious. <laughs> studious? I don't know. What? I guess that's a compliment. I think it's a compliment. <laughs> okay. And you're saying like you like them, but they can relate to you. But then when they read our reviews, I think uh, we're studious. They, yeah, we're a little intimidating sometimes. Listen, I am exactly like the front bencher. Please, I've <laughs> never had any any uh, um, uh, illusions about that. You are more highbrow. Highbrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, you're, you're, I, I feel like your taste is more uh, sophisticated. I'm like. I'm, I mean, you're you're feeding a lot of trolls as we speak. <laughs> I think they're <laughs> going to use this as a gif for the rest of our lives. But sure, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> okay, so the next comment uh, is: This is my favorite segment, not only of the channel but entire YouTube. Wow. You need to do this more often, at the very least once a month. Also, I would love you to retake My Name is Khan, which I remember Ms. Anupama Chopra didn't love very much, but it is more prevalent today than ever. Also, Kabhi Alvida Nakena and Black. And I'm supposed to be the studious one. <laughs> you didn't like anything they are saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I was not a big fan of uh, Kabhi. Uh, but my Kabhi, Name is Khan. Uh, my Name is Khan. Ah, okay. Yeah, I felt, I felt like, again, his performance I thought was very, very sort mm. of heartfelt and he really put himself into it. But for me, it all kind of collapsed in that climax. Mm. When the water came and the floods began, right, and, right, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. and it kind of mm. sort of didn't hold together after that. Uh, but of course, Karan has always said that if his name was Karan uh, Kashyap, we would have treated <laughs> my name is Khan differently. <laughs> we just didn't take it seriously because of him. Uh, listen, happy to do any and all of these retakes. Uh, so Rahul, it's time for us to behave better. Uh, yeah, we will be back soon. I'm not going to give any time frame. <laughs> but but before eight months. Oh no, for sure. That's very easy. That's the bar is very low. The right? bar is low. <laughs> the bar is low. We will be back. Thank you for watching. दोस्तों जिंदगी में अक्सर हम ऐसे क्रॉस रोड पर खड़े होते हैं जहां हमें समझ में नहीं आता कि अपना जॉब करते रहें या छोड़कर बंबई चले जाएं फिल्मों के लिए लिखना शुरू करें जो पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं वो करते रहें या किसी फिल्म स्कूल को ज्वाइन कर लें ये फैसले आसान नहीं होते आप हमारे साथ दो घंटे का ये कोर्स कीजिए एफ सी की तरफ से स्क्रीन राइटिंग मास्टर क्लास मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये कोर्स करने के बाद सिर्फ दो घंटे बाद आप इस फैसले को बेहतर ले पाएंगे आइए ज्वाइन कीजिए फिल्म कंपेनियन के यूट्यूब चैनल पर